What's good, y'all? Welcome to Ready to Tape. And today we're going to be talking about three issues the Las Vegas Raiders have that I believe they need to resolve in the 2022 season if we want to be the successful football team we believe we can be. Now, I know this video may seem somewhat negative, but at the same time, you have to take in consideration we were a successful team to make it to the playoffs last year, even with these issues. Okay, and now these are some issues that we've been aware of that I believe came from the last coaching regime. But at the same time, we'll have to find out and see what transpires throughout this season upcoming because it's week one and we play the Chargers. So I'm going to hop into it and tell you my top three issues that like, we need to resolve going into this season. So if y'all can't make a play, hit that like button, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure to hit that subscribe as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subs. Appreciate everybody that's been joining in. Let's get into it. So my number three, and I'm going to go from three to one, of course. You know what I mean? My number three is Derek Carr's fumble. And I'm trying to be unbiased as possible when making this list. But this is something that we need to really pay attention to. He just got a new contract, new contract extension, I should say, with the new regime. So you can see that they have some trust in him. Now, what happens when he goes out there and he displays too much fumbling? This is something that he definitely needs to work on and resolve because people would call me a car stance. People would call me a car fan. Whatever it is, Kardashian, whatever your name is, he does have a fumbling problem. He's led the league in fumbling since he's been drafted. He led the league last year in fumbling. This isn't okay because this is causing turnovers, um, a dead plays. And a lot of the times I feel like he could be strong in the pocket, keeping his hands on the ball when ultimately he's just being weak with the football. And I don't know if it's because he has small hands, but it's definitely an issue we need to resolve, especially when he runs the football. It's almost like he's definitely going to fumble. So I don't know what that is per se, but we definitely have to be careful of these situations because he's prone to fumbling the football. And that's my number three concern. And I would like to see if Derek Carr really slims down on that on that statistic because Josh McDaniels is probably going to have an issue with that. And I'm surprised John Gruden didn't have an ultimate issue with that as well, being on the way how he was. But going into my number two concern, this one is a little bit different. It's not about an individual player. It's about the offense, ultimately. And it's the red zone offense. The red zone offense seems like it just isn't able to click and able to get punch it in to the red zone. And you think about it, this whole preseason, we were not able to really score on the opening drive. And I would bring it up like, okay, another opening drive. We were not able to score. We had to settle for field goals. And I would hate to go out there and settle for field goals when you have Waller, Adams, and Renfro. And then you have Zamira White and Josh Jacobs. Are we not able to punch it in? And then when you look at the statistics – when John Gruden came, though, this is where it gets interesting. This is where it gets really interesting because you figure when John Gruden came, we were in the bottom 10 in red zone, in red zone offense, bottom 10. Every year John Gruden was here, we were basically bottom 10 every year. But prior to Gruden coming here, when Jack Del Rio was the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, or the Oakland Raiders, I should say, we averaged a top 10 red zone offense. So how do you go – from having Jack Del Rio for three years and having a top 10 red zone offense on average to having a bottom 10 red zone offense on average when John Gruden came. And it's an easily controlled experiment because each of them had a good chunk of three years, one a little bit more, had, had a little bit more time, but they both had a similar amount of time. And you can see how the stats unfold. So it's going to be interesting how Josh McDaniels tweaks this offense is able to call some things in the red zone and see if we can get back to that top 10 red zone offense like Carr's first three years that he was in the league. Some people may blame Carr for this, but I, will, uh, I think this is the ultimate deciding factor. This is his third coach, his third real coach, we could say. And this will decide whether the red zone is kind of on him or it was really ultimately on Gruden. So we'll continue to take a look at that. And my number one, and this one may be a surprise to a lot of people because I was the only, I feel like not a lot of people were really hounding on this. But for me, it was taking short passes or short, um, short passes to the house. 
So people may think, well, what are you talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is, for instance, if we throw a ball five yards, will that player take it to the damn house? And that is ultimately what I want to see and what I think we had the biggest issue with because every time a big play would happen, it was always Derek Carr bombing it down the field. Where was the instance to where we could throw it five yards and the guy takes it to the house? We watched Kelsey last year catch a five-yard dunk, a little dink from Mahomes and takes it 45-yard touchdown off of a five-yard pass, guys. This has been an issue with the Reds for a long time because you think Josh Jacobs, for instance, how many 20-plus yard rushes does he have? I think he has two in the last two years. Two rushes for over 20 yards in the last two years? That's not going to get the job done. We need players that are going to be able to catch the football at a short, short yardage and then take it the distance. Not us having to throw the ball the distance every time. And this is just this is one of the concerns that I've had. And you could look at the numbers regardless of how you see it. Every single time we had a big play, Derek Carr had to throw it 20 plus yards. You think about the plays run for gets. Carr's bombing it to him about 20 plus yards to Deshaun Jackson last year, Henry Ruggs last year. I mean, Josh Jacobs, you dunk it off to him, he may get some yardage, but he's not really taking it to the house. And on top of that, even when he does rush the football, he's not he's not fast enough to break away. So even in that aspect, when it's not even throwing the football, we need a guy that's going to come in here and be able to break one. Because last year we took Kenyon Drake in the free agency. And we watched a play when he was on the Cardinals going up against the Cowboys to where he breaks for a long touchdown. It's like we've been missing this, right? He comes here and we don't get any of that. And he was the backup running back. So where was it from the primary? And I'm really going to want to see plays to where it's not having to be a huge throw or anything like that. I want to see solid plays to where a guy can make a man miss after catching a 5, 10-yard pass, make a guy miss and take it to take it the distance. Okay? Darren Waller's coming back. He's supposed to be healthy and get a new contract. He needs to do that because he has been terrible breaking tackles. This is one thing I've had an issue with when it comes to Darren Waller. He hasn't been able to break tackles and take it the distance as well. So – I just want to see this everything come together, become that solid group, Derek Carr fumbling problem, come down to a minimum, really bring that number down lower, at least below five, guy. Got to be below five fumbles. And then you go on to talk about the red zone offense. We need that to step up because I don't want to see a bunch of field goals. Now, Daniel Carlson is a beast, but at the same time, I don't want him getting a bunch of fantasy points. I want to go out there and score touchdowns, right? So, that as well. And then the big plays, we got to finish on the big plays. When the opportunity is there, you got to make a guy miss and go the distance. Get into the end zone, man. It doesn't have to be a uh, – you don't have to beat everybody on the defense. It has to be a long ball for you to catch it and then score. No, catch it before about five yards. Catch the screen pass and take it to the house. And that's all i got to say, man. I'm excited for this game though coming up against the chargers this sunday and it's going to be a blast man we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and honestly this is one of the best teams we've had in a long time so it's going to be an exciting season plus the division is packed out man the division is crazy it's going to be one of the best nfl seasons probably in history to be honest because this division is legit this division is legit and i'm excited let me know if you guys are going to be blacking out this la game Another home game for us. And also let me know what you guys think about this top three list on things that we need to fix going into this 2022 season. And that if you have any issues that you think we need to get resolved outside of these top three, because there may be some other things that I missed or that I may not be talking about, but I am super excited for this season. I don't want this video to be negative or anything like that. It was just some things that I want to see change going into this season with the new regime. Um, with just a new outlook, with a new scheme, everything in the sorts. So let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to make a play. Hit that like button. Appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Check me out later. Ready to take.